Welcome back to our channel, the channel for the latest news and stories about the Princess of Wales, Princess Catherine, and her royal family. Today, we bring you breaking news. Catherine stuns in a cardigan coat as she leads William to surprise adventure on a royal visit. Those who may also have fallen through into the ice cold water if they not put one step in the incorrect place. But when they perilously stood at the side of the rail track and gazed down into the river some meters beyond, the Prince and Princess of Wales appeared confident. The pair excited the cabin of passenger trains following their visit whilst they were parked on the overpass at the White Pass in the Yukon Route Railroad in Carcross, Canada. In spite of being left confronting a fall, Catherine swiftly recovered her calm, as well as bypassed onto stable ground with her husband right alongside her. Within a week of learning that the late Queen and Prince Philip had used the railroad while they'd stopped by the region in 1959, the monarchs reached the impromptu choice. The Wales seemed to enjoy the excursion, although it briefly made their assistants very anxious. The pair exits the cab and moves cautiously straight down the railroad track throughout the direction of the level land. Catherine seemed a little nervous as she guides William towards the bottom of the rails while maintaining surveillance on the trains. As Catherine and William make their way across the footbridge and approach the earth, smoke is seen emitted from either the steaming locomotive. The prince and princess decided mostly on an unexpected opportunity to investigate the old locomotive's cabin. When Catherine and William got closer to the finish of what they thought had been a short journey down the lines, she can really not stop except to grin. The unexpected pit stop happened on the royal pair descended the magnificent Montana mountain in the distant Yukon Canadian territory. William was already on his way down when he saw the railway which was spewing flames, and also was told that his mother and grandmother had taken the final compartment of their official trip over 60 years before. The overjoyed prince persuaded his bride to climb the railway bridge over the picturesque Lake Bennett in order to obtain a proper look. Catherine accessorized with jewels by jeweler Shelley MacDonald, as well as a cardigan sweater by local brand Centale both priced at £707. Just two hours following the original appearance in a red fancy coat, the princess transformed through in an understated look. William and Catherine were already at the Carcross Commons, the beautiful village mostly on the renowned Klondike Trail. The early 1800s discovery of gold had an impact on the small community in the Yukon, a province in the far of Canada. The regional First Nations tribe provided the prince and princess with a colourful traditional greeting as those who stood underneath the ornately carved totem pole. The crowd applauded and applauded. The noticed especially the enthralled by a number of little Targrish performers, regional kids between both the ages of four and eight, who were performing their raven as well as wolf performances while clad in customary capes and headpieces. Catherine laughed and William once showed out such a child inside the rear who had been crowing at his playmate. Towards the pleasure of the prince and princess, they sang in their native Tlingit First Nation tongue prior to actually beginning the song about wolves and roaring together. The next song was indeed a Tlingit farewell song. Cargross Tigrish Nation Chief Andy Carville appealed to the couple to help with recognition of First Nation governments. We're honored you came to spend time with our seniors, they said. With both the help of our history, music and dancing, we're emerging victorious from our struggles as a country. We kindly want your assistance and support, as we want to establish that connection with the Crown. We continue to seek security for our people's groups and also for the others of our lands. 
this area must be preserved for its beautiful nature. We have hope that we're able to help our kids who are performing their songs here. We seek to be acknowledged and as an administration. The pair were wandering about in the early morning in the city of Whitehorse, roughly 40 kilometers northwest of Carcross, following their overnight stay in the three-star guesthouse. Their first trip had been to the McBride Museum, wherein they participated in a narrative engagement with a collection of local kids and learnt about the heritage of the Yukon province. They took a seat at some of the logs alongside the youngsters and Grandma Lorraine Allen, who may have been translating the book from Southern Tuchone, the native tongue, into English. William and Catherine laughed out loud when their first encounter William the Moose at the book's opening. They reportedly interviewed Mike Parkhill, a comic book writer whose booklet Hide and Peak has been utilized in classrooms to educate Southern Tuchon. Prince's Foundation Canada, a non-profit founded by the Prince of Wales, sponsors the project. The Prince, who appeared eager to learn more concerning the local tongue, inquired of Mr. Parkhill, would this be challenging to learn? What's the pronunciation of the word? pointing at a large-scale phonomic awareness boards. The pair then went to a recently remodeled telegraph office once the storyteller finished. The duo left their mark in the museum's electronic memory book using telegraph electronic signals, which had been transformed into an electronic message and shared on Twitter. Catherine and William both clicked the publish icon at the precise same time. The pair then strolled through the sidewalks of Yukon, which have been thronged with tens of thousands of people who were waving banners and applauding. Madison Mills, age 8, described Catherine as being extremely lovely and added she looked genuinely sad that she had got chilly standing out there for so much time to meet her. You're always the coldest fingers of all the people I've met there. William informed longtime Whitehorse local Lee Summerton as they exchanged pleasantries. She cried, it must have been good enough to justify it, attempting to make William chuckle. Thanks for watching today's video. What's your thought about William's visit? Please let us know your points of view, and goodbye for the time being.